Hi there, in this video, we're going to learn the instructions that can be used to detect positive or negative edges. After that, I'll show you how the factory I/O software can be used during this course. That's a great software that can connect to different bands of PLCs and simulate industrial processes. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller-based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content I will be posting through the channel. Okay, let's start the video. I configured my Sematic 300 station in the previous videos. So let's open the main plug OB1. I'm going to explain and test these instructions that are used to detect positive or negative edges. Let's learn them with these two instructions. Well, this instruction needs a bit of memory to work correctly. This instruction checks any change in the state of the RLO behind itself. If the state of the RLO behind the instruction changes from 0 to 1, the output of this instruction will be on only during one scan cycle. In other words, if you consider the left line as your virtual power line, when the virtual power behind the contact changes from the off state to on, the output of this instruction will be on only during the next scan cycle. Now let's use this instruction. Similarly, it needs a bit of memory to work correctly. This instruction detects positive edges in a specific address, which should be entered here. For example, let's enter the first digital input address, I0.0. Now, this instruction compares the signal state of the first digital input with the signal state from its previous scan cycle which is stored in M0.1. So, if this instruction is enabled and the state of the first digital input changes from off to on, the output of this instruction will be on only during the next scan cycle. Now, let's save the program. As you see, Semantic Manager has detected an error. It says a preceding logic operation is necessary because of connecting this instruction to the left line directly. In consequence, the state of the RLO behind the first instruction is always on. Let me use a normally open contact behind it with the first digital input address. Now the performances of these two instructions are the same. Again, let's save the program and tested using the PLC SIM simulator. Okay, as you see, when I enable the first digital input to generate positive signal edges, you can't see any changes in the state of these two digital outputs because my program is executing continually and one scan cycle takes a very short time. I need to enable the single scan option to see how my program is working. Again, let's enable the first digital input. So the set of the I0.0 changes from 0 to 1. In other words, I have a positive signal edge in I0.0. 
Also, based on the program, the URL or behind the first instruction has changed from 0 to 1. So, these two instructions produce a pulse that takes only one scan cycle. For the next scan cycles, the output of these two instructions return to 0. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, if the continuous scan option is enabled, maybe we can't see that the outputs are turned on during one scan cycle. Therefore, set and reset calls are usually used to store positive or negative edges. Okay, let's continue the video with this program. I've explained the SR instruction in the previous videos. Based on this program, I can use the first digital input to turn on the first digital output and use the second or third digital input to turn off the output. Try to test it. Now let me change it a little using these two instructions, the positive and negative ILO8 detections. Because of some safety reasons, industrial processes are usually started after pressing and also releasing a normally open push button. So let me use the negative ILO edge detection after the first digital input. Also, industrial processes are usually stopped immediately when the related push button is pressed. If I use normally open push buttons for the second and third digital inputs, I need to use the positive ILOH detection after the next two normally open contacts. Now let's save and test the program using the PLC SIM simulator. As you see, I should enable and then disable the first digital input to turn on the output. But if I press the second and third digital input, the CPU turns off the output immediately. Now, let me test the program using the factory I.O. software. It's a great software to simulate simple industrial processes. Well, let's create a new project. Okay, on the right side, I have a list of industrial equipment. Let me design a simple control box to control a warning light. Note that if you want to change the height of an equipment, press the V key on your keyboard. Now, let me add different types of push buttons and a warning light to the inserted control box. As you see, some inserted equipment have a tag or name. I can use this icon to see or hide the name of actuators, which can be connected to my PLC outputs. Also, the name of sensors or push buttons can be seen by clicking on this icon. This category of equipment can be connected to my PLC inputs. Now I wanna connect these three push buttons and the warning light to these digital input addresses and the first digital output respectively. First, let's define a suitable tag for each address in my program. That's optional.
Okay, to make a connection between the factory I.O. software and my PLC, I need to select the driver's option under the file menu. Now I need to select my PLC type. If you are using a real S7 200, 300 or 400 PLC station, which supports an Ethernet port, you should select this item. Then go to the configuration section, select your PLC station, and enter the IP address of your PLC station. Now my PLC station doesn't have any Ethernet module. Therefore, I want to use the PLC Sync Simulator. So I need to select the last item, Siemens S7 PLC Sync. Then I need to select its version, determine my numerical data type, then determine the number of my digital or analog inputs or outputs. For the current project, I need three digital inputs and one digital output starting from the first byte, byte zero. Now I only need to click here to connect the factory I.O. software to my PLC SIM simulator. Here you can see the selected addresses which are used in my program too. Now let's connect them to the inserted equipment inside the factory I.O. software. Okay, I set up the necessary connection settings. Now let me enable my virtual PLC. As you see, the third digital input has enabled immediately because the stop push button is normally closed. Now let me sort the windows to have a better view of my program, the PLC scene window and the designed control box inside the factory I.O. software. Okay, let's test the program. As you see, I need to press and release the start push button to turn on the warning light. If I press the reset push button, my virtual PLC turns off the warning light immediately. But if I press the stop push button, the warning light isn't stopped immediately. I also need to release this push button because the stop push button is normally closed. To solve this problem, I need to replace the stop push button with a normally open push button. But this way is not recommended. Because of a safety reasons, the type of emergency and stop push buttons are normally closed. It's better to modify the program. I can replace the positive RLO8 detection with a negative type or change the normally open contact with its normally closed contact. Again, let's save, download, and test this program. Okay, until now, we have learned important bit logic instructions and also different ways to test a program. I can use a real PLC station or the PLC Sync Simulator and also connect them to factory I.O. software. In the next videos, I'll prefer to use the PLC Sync Simulator with factory I.O. software to simulate and test my programs. 
Thanks so much for watching this video. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.